Hi everyone, it's David and I'm coming to you from the Tabula Rasa Mystery School out at the Living Miracles Monastery and we are just having a spectacular experience here and uh, it's a very beautiful, still, quiet night so haven't done a, a session on Spreaker for a while, thought I'd check in with everybody and just share what is on my heart tonight. What I was thinking about was the Course in Miracles teaching, Seek Not to Change the World, Seek Rather to Change Your Mind About the World. And really, this is the core lesson of forgiveness, is that it's the same with the serenity prayer. You know, the, the distinction to be made is just a discernment between what you can change and what you cannot change. And of course, only the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is capable of offering that solution. So in the end, that's what accepting the atonement is. It's really just fully embracing the Holy Spirit, the remembrance of God, the remembrance of the Christ identity. But it's fascinating when you really look at that. Seek not to change the world. Seek rather to change your mind about the world. And we talk about the world We could talk about the projected linear time-space cosmos. We could talk about the ego. You know, there is no world, is what Jesus tells us in the Course, in the workbook, with an exclamation point after that, actually. <laughs> so it's pretty emphatic. But also we could say there is no ego. So ego and world, in this sense, is being... Um, they're being used in a synonymous way. And if the ego is a death wish, you can't really change a death wish. You can just see that it's impossible. That's what uh, the Holy Spirit, the light of the atonement shows, the impossibility of the error. And when you really take it in, you start to realize that uh, that all of time is just repeating that belief in the original error. So it's just a, a an error that seems to be repeated over and over and over, and that's what makes time. It makes the illusion of time. It makes the illusion of, of change. And time is associated with change. And that's why there's so many ways of measuring it, so many increments of time from seconds to minutes to hours to days to weeks to years you know to decades to centuries and on and on millennium and so on and so forth time is changing the, that's what the physicists have told us you know that the, that the cosmos is expanding it seems to involve uh, a movement towards destruction and chaos, which is what they call entropy, but it's always in flux. Everything is changing, shifting, and all of that. If you had to put a mask over eternity, that's quite a mask, a mask of constant change and flux covering over the changeless, that which is eternal, that which has no beginning, no end. And so, the main distinction, you could say the one distinction that is required to wake up from this dream is just to see the impossibility of change. So when he says, seek not to change the world, if the world itself by definition is the belief in change, then you can't really change the change. <laughs> You can only change your mind 
about the change. What does that even mean? Change your mind about the change. You can, you can see the impossibility of it. That's, that's it. That's what forgiveness is. It, it overlooks the error of change. So, this is very applicable because this is actually the answer that solves all seeming problems. Because the only problem was the belief in change. And when you come to this state of mind where you see the impossibility of change, then that's it. It's like game over for the ego. In fact, it shows that there never was a game. So, this is the joy and the happiness and the lightheartedness, the glee, this is the fun, <laughs> this is the love, this is what it's all about, is, is seeing the impossibility of change. It's, we're, we're just asked to change your mind about the world, which is really just see its impossibility. And this applies to everything. I remember watching a video many, many years ago that was titled, Seek Not to Change the Course. And uh, it's almost prophetic now, when you look at all the different versions of A Course in Miracles, that there was this video way, way, way back. And the title of the video was Seek Not to Change the Course. It's really a version of Seek Not to Change the World. That's where the title came from. And that's just a specific application of seek not to change the world. And yet, the ego insists on changing everything. You know, how many versions of the Course are really needed? Well, it's actually the practical application of the, what I'm talking about tonight is what's needed. Not coming up with different versions and variations and you know, all this craziness of the world. Oh yeah, variety is the spice of life. No, not. Uh, you know, or uh, different strokes for different folks. No. Actually, Jesus asked us in the Course, He says, make, make this year different by making it all the same, by seeing that there aren't really any differences in form, because there aren't specific different forms. That's what the unified perception of forgiveness shows. It, it's just a unified, singular dream, and there aren't different forms. You know, that, that's just fragmented perception. That's wrong-mindedness. That was the error itself. The error of change is part of all those specific changing forms. And everything seems to be changing as far as you look at the forms. You know, even whatever you look at, like the body, they talk about the cellular regeneration and the, you know, it's just appearance, but there's a lot of change underneath this appearance. And uh, and we all know, even on the surface of things, the body definitely seems to change and the world seems to change. But, but the mind that is the mind that is Christ, an idea in the mind of God, that mind, that Christ mind, is changeless, as is the mind of God. And so really there's nothing in time and space that you can look at and perceive uh, through the five senses that relates to anything real. That doesn't have anything to do with reality. There's just one reality and that's eternal spirit and there's not multiple realities and there aren't different perceptions of reality because reality is spirit. Reality is eternal and changeless, and, and perception always changes, you know, by definition. It's egoic. It was invented by the ego. It can be healed, and, and that is seen anew by the Holy Spirit, but it's, uh, it, by nature, it is, it is false. It is changing. So, it's the same, you could go down the line, not only seek not to change the course, when you look at, at interpersonal relationships, you know, changing interpersonal relationships, or what people talk about changing a partner, all of those things are still an attempt to change the change. But, but the change is false by definition, so you can't change the false. You can just see the false is false. See? See, that's the difference. It's not 
trying to change the false, but just see the false as false. It's very peaceful when you just see the false as false. It's very relaxing, very nurturing. It's, it's quite, uh, as far as concepts go, forgiveness is the last concept you'll ever need. It's a perspective. And it's very, very, very relaxing because it makes no attempt to judge what cannot be judged. It, it makes no attempt to take the seeming changing linear world and then break it apart and, and then change the pieces or change the configurations or make something better, make something have more of something, you know, that it's uh, all this small self egoic improvement is really no improvement at all. Because again, it's within the realm of perception of specifics, which, you know, by definition, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. You know, this, this perceptual world is, is by definition changing. And uh, again, you simply cannot change the change. You can't change the changing. You have to just see the impossibility of it. So, uh, another way of saying this is you can't heal what is unreal. So that's why you can't heal the body, because the body is just a part of fragmented perception, but the body isn't sick. Uh, it's, it's just a piece of the puzzle, and when you see the purpose for the body and for the world is just forgiveness, a very unifying purpose, which unifies all things, then, then is the perception healed. That's what the problem was all along. It was cracked perception. It was fragmented perception. It was distorted perception. So, when you're practicing A Course in Miracles, that's, that's all this is pointing to. It's quite simple. And uh, when you have a difficulty understanding this, it's because Quite frankly, you still are invested in specifics. You're invested in idols. What does that mean? You can be invested in people, invested in money, invested in companies, invested in a sports team winning, invested in a relationship looking a certain way, uh, invested in the body, thinking the body has some value in and of itself. Uh, you know, all the things that people call life on earth, which is not life at all. Eternal life is what life is. But all the projections that people call life uh, is basically just, uh, again, a devotion, a dedication to, an addiction to the changing. And you can't change the changing can only see the impossibility of it. That's where the awakening occurs. It's not in looking to make anything better, looking to improve anything. You won't find enlightenment in ego self-concept goals. When you achieve them, you will notice you are still not satisfied. And that's because they're ephemeral, they're temporal. If you're an eternal being, you will never be satisfied with the ephemeral and the temporal. It's just coming down to the basic fact of who I am is an eternal being, a changeless being, and I will never be content with the changing. So this is the beauty of A Course in Miracles. This is the simplicity of salvation. And when you look at any attempt to, to make the world real first and then heal it, then you're seeing that's impossible. You can't make the error real and accept the actual correction, because the correction shows you the unreality of, of the world. In terms of stepping stones, it seems to be, as you go through the stages of the development of trust, it sometimes seems as if things are being taken away from you. You really start to see you're just devaluing the ego and devaluing all the things that are projected from the ego. And you simply value peace of mind and joy and happiness more than you do 
form and outcomes. It's quite, quite simple. But the ego defense against this realization, the resistance to understanding how simple everything really is, let all things be exactly as they are, and see that everything that happens to me I ask for and receive as I've asked, the simplicity of that is, is a unified mind. And the ego doesn't see anything simple in that at all. It, it would call someone who says this as maybe a simpleton, or if they, they don't have all their marbles, or there's nothing in between those two ears, or you know, it's got all kinds of, uh, they're not all there, you know, the ego has all kinds of uh, judgments against this uh, pure, joyful simplicity of a state of mind that's right here in this moment. So, I'm just, uh, I guess I've given away the mystery. There's really no mystery to it. Enlightenment is, is not mysterious, it's, it's actually the natural state of mind of the Christ. It's the natural alignment with God, being sourced by God, being created, perfect, pure love, eternal spirit, by an eternally loving creator. And that's what simplicity is, and that's what waking up is all about. But it's not uh, something that you have to constantly guess at, or it's not something where you're looking to try to cue off of the form to know who you are. That small, still voice within, that inner recognition is what waking up is about, not about trying to find some evidence in the world to support your identity. As uh, in the Matrix movie, you might remember when they first go into the Matrix, they're driving along the street, and Trinity's in the car, and Neo and Morpheus, and uh, and they talk, start talking about the, the noodles, this place where... Uh, uh, Neo had, remembers a memory of having some good noodles, and uh, and uh, basically he's told all those memories that you think happened never happened, and he doesn't know what that means. and And basically, Trinity there is to is right there in the car to give him the answer. He says that the that it means the Matrix cannot tell you who you are. The world of images cannot tell you who you are. You're not going to find in a bunch of images and idols, you're not going to find the Holy Son of God, pure abstract spirit and love and light in the images. That's why you have to forgive them. You have to forgive the veil, forgive the veil of ignorance that was drawn over the face of Christ. Forgive the specific images that were made to hide and cover over the abstract love of God and Christ. And that's why it's, it's a journey through forgiveness. It doesn't matter what you want to call that in any tradition or any culture or even in science. It goes by different names, but it's the same. It's still seeing the impossibility of duality, the impossibility of multiplicity and the absolute truth of oneness. And, ooh, doesn't that have a ring? Oneness. I am one. The Father and I are one. I am one. So that's a fact. And all you have to do is open up and embrace the fact of love, of oneness, of of pure union and unity. That's what spirit is. It's you know, you can feel the resonance of that. So yeah, I'm here and sharing and shining and laughing and loving and uh I'm so grateful to be sharing this message of the heart with you. 
and so grateful to be sharing the simplicity of salvation and the simplicity of this enlightenment experience and I love you so dearly and you are ever in my heart and I send blessings and blessings of, of love to you, beloved one. Amen.